let's talk about ornamentation. Now, ornamentation is one of those other things, um, kind of like I was saying earlier, bowing is, is the accent in which a fiddle player speaks. Uh, ornamentation is kind of similar to me. Um, it really is a way to kind of spice up a fiddle tune or a melody, a vocal melody especially, and kind of make it your own and just kind of give it some shape and um, make it a little more expressive. Vibrato is another tool often used for expression and that's something we'll check out a little later on. But people often forget that uh, we have a lot of other tools at our disposal for, um, for expressing melodies and kind of making it our own. So, you know, before you start experimenting with vibrato or if you're a classical violinist and you're kind of in the habit of using vibrato, I'd encourage you to kind of just get comfortable playing melodies with pretty minimal vibrato and just kind of explore these other ways we can, you know, be expressive with a melody and make it interesting. So, you know, we've got bow speed, um, uh, like contact point um, this, that alters the tonal color. Um, we've got articulation, all these things that can really make a melody interesting without even using vibrato. And ornamentation is a very powerful tool for that. Um, if you listen to any Celtic fiddling, like Scottish and Irish fiddling, um, there's a very deep tradition there in uh, ornamentation, and it's a very, very deep dive that uh, I don't know a whole lot about, but I sure love listening to that type of playing. So if, if you're interested in, in getting really into, you know, all those different sorts of turns and ornaments, um, check some of that stuff out. But, you know, the uh, American fiddling, old time and country and bluegrass, they all have their own kind of take on it. And I think a lot of that is inspired by uh, various styles of Celtic fiddling, but then it kind of turned into it its, into its own thing, too. Um, so I'm going to talk about some ornaments that are encountered a lot in, in kind of like old country fiddling and bluegrass. Um, these are some things that really, uh, really help, especially on a, a vocal melody. So, you know, vocal melodies tend to be less noty than fiddle tunes. We've mostly looked at fiddle tunes so far, um, which are more based on eighth notes. But when you're playing a, a melody that, that, you know, has words to it, and you might be playing with the singer, they sing the melody, and then you're going to take a solo and you're going to play that melody. These are ways to kind of fiddleify it, if you will. Um, so let's just kind of start off with, with one of the more basic ornaments. Um, you know, people call these different things and, you know, in guitar terms, you might hear it referred to as a hammer-on. Um, it also could be just called a grace note. Grace note meaning just this, this short little note that happens before your target note. So if we just think, uh, let's go with G natural on the D string. So with our third finger, Let's say that's our main note. A grace note is just going to briefly come in right before we hit that note, and it's going to be slurred into our target note. So it'll sound like this. Right? Now, depending on the tonality, depending on the key, you might want to play a whole step below rather than a half step. versus using the F-sharp. So the idea of this grace note is not to take away from the note itself, from your target note. That's still, you know, what it's all about. But this is just kind of putting this little, like, blip in there right before you hit it. And it just gives it a nice little mood. You know, we learned Red Wing earlier. You could kind of throw that in there. that sort of thing. So that would be kind of your first step with a grace note. So one thing you can do to practice that is just go up a, a major scale, for instance, and experiment with putting in this grace note right before every note. And that grace note is just going to come from the previous note in the scale. So obviously we can't use a grace note below the open G. 
So I'm going to play the G and then we'll start putting grace notes in um, after that. So we have G and A. So instead of just going up to that A, I'm going to use that open G as a grace note. So it's very quick, right? You hardly notice it. You're still hearing the main target note as the, as the point of focus. And this is a case where we definitely want to avoid slurring across the string. Um, other times you can go either way, um, but when it's going to be a grace note, it's happening so fast that if we tried to do that grace note across the string, it would really kind of take away from it. So for this time, we are going to definitely want to use our fourth finger. And same thing going back down, we're going to still do a grace note up into the note. Now, in terms of the speed of that grace note, that really varies um, between different fiddlers and different styles. Um, but I always just love the style of ornamentation in like classic country fiddle playing. Um, Tommy Jackson is a great example of that. He's on a lot of the classic uh, Ray Price stuff and a lot of other recordings as well. Um, he has some great recordings just playing fiddle tunes. He's just a great fiddle player. Um, but the way he would play vocal melodies um, is a really kind of just define what we think of as country fiddle playing. And he would often do these ornaments pretty slow. Um, and we'll kind of get into that a little bit more in a second here, but uh, definitely check out Tommy Jackson. <laughs> 